All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be solving uh, another past paper question, and this is mensuration, and it's followed by trigonometry, and that's how it usually is. And this is a question that has been asked uh, by you guys very often to solve, so here it is, let's get straight to it. So, and this I should mention is from October, November, 2020, paper two, variant one. Okay, so it says here, the diagram shows a garden shed positioned on horizontal ground. It is in the shape of a prism with trapezium ABCD as its cross section. The base of the shed ABFE is a rectangle and you're given the lens AB 1.55, AD 2.25, BC 1.85 and BF 2.10. Okay, now let's read the question again and this time a bit more slowly. And uh, I'm gonna keep on looking at the figure and I'm gonna keep on extracting the important information as I read along. So the uh, garden shows, uh, the diagram shows a garden shed position on horizontal ground, okay. It is it is a shape in, it, it is in the shape of a prism, so very important, that means whatever formula I'm gonna use is gonna be related to prism with trapezium ABCD as its cross section. So how do you calculate volume of prism? It's, it's area of cross section multiplied by length, whereas length is the perpendicular distance between the two identical faces. I have a video on uh, prisms, you guys should check it out. And here the question has been kind enough to tell you what the cross section is. It's trapezium ABCD. So ABCD that you see here, it kind of looks like a rectangle, but it's not, it's a trapezium. The question has been kind enough to tell us that. The base of the shed, ABFE is a rectangle. So again, very important, the base is rectangle. And again, you're given the lens, which is something that we saw earlier also. And what exactly are you supposed to do? In the first part, you're supposed to calculate the volume. So let's do just that. So how do you calculate the volume of a, of a prism? You do area of cross section into the length. As you guys know, this is the formula that I prefer using. Uh, a lot of, uh, in, in some cases, you'll find base area times height. Now that's perfectly all right. I don't have a problem with that, but this is a bit more specific and uh, it's my it's my personal preference. So cross section here is going to be the trapezium. So trapezium, as you guys must know, the formula for calculating the area of trapezium is half into sum of parallel lengths. And I've just highlighted the parallel lengths, 2.25 and 1.85. How exactly do I know they're parallel? Because you guys can see that they have a 90 degree angle. They're, both of them make a 90 degree angle with AB. That means they're definitely parallel. And the height, of the trapezium, okay? Bear in mind, the height of the trapezium is 1.55. So let's work out the area of trapezium. So half into 2.25, 2.25 plus 1.85, bracket close, times the height, which is 1.55, times the height of the trapezium, okay? And then this is multiplied by the length of the prism, which is 2.10. And then let's work this out. So you have 0.5, bracket 2.25 plus 1.85 bracket close times 1.55. So I'm looking at the area of trapezium and then I'm gonna times this by 2.10. So this turns out to be 6.67275. Okay, and then correct to three significant figures. This will be 6.67. As you guys know, that's a standard rule that we give non-exact answers correct to three significant figures. I posted a, uh, this is also, a very common question that uh, how many significant figures have we used and there's a lot of confusion regarding this also but i posted a snapshot of the email that i sent uh, to cambridge and the reply that i got so you guys can go check it out on my instagram okay so that was part a now let's do part b part b says the roof of the shed cghd so let's have a look at that cghd all right is painted one liter of paint covers two square meters calculate the amount of paint used and you get four marks for that okay so now, before I can work out the area of the roof, there's something that I'd like to point out is that do not get confused. This is, this is a problem that a lot of students are facing is that do not get confused that AB is also 1.55, but that by no way means that DC is also going to be 1.55. Because remember this right here is a trapezium, it's not a rectangle. However, since BF is 2.55 and since this is a rectangle, that means CG will also be 2.55. So that means I know as far as the rectangle on the top of the roof is concerned, I know one length out of the two and I, the length that I know is basically 2.10. Okay, whoops, sorry about that. So this length right here is 2.10. Now that means what I need to work out is this length. Now this question requires you to think a little bit outside the box, I mean, not literally, but it requires you to go the extra mile. And in order to work out this length, what you'll have to do is, you'll have to make a line, a horizontal line, okay, 
from C to let's say this point X. Now, why exactly am I doing this? Because this length, this CX is going to be 1.55, okay? Now, since this is a horizontal line, that means this angle right here will be 90 degrees. Let me zoom in so you guys can see what I'm talking about. And one length that you guys should be able to work out is the length from D to X. Now, how exactly will you be able to work it out? Let's see. So all of this is 2.25. And from X to A is 1.85, as you can see over here. So this length will also be 1.85. So here's what I'm doing. I'm doing 2.25 minus 1.85. Now, once you've done this, this length turns out to be 0 0.4. So here you have 0 0.4. I'll write it over here. Hopefully you guys can see it. So you have 0 0.4, you have 1.55, and the length that's missing is D to C, which is basically the hypotenuse. So here's what I'm doing. I'm working out DC which is gonna be equal to square root of 0 0.4 squared plus 1.55 squared. So let's see what is DC equal to. So square root of 0.4 squared plus 1.55 squared. So what do you get? You get 1.6007. So I'll just write 1.600, okay? Now I'm gonna copy this, okay? Oops, sorry. Let me copy this and bring it over to this part because this is where you're supposed to show all your working. Oops, sorry about that. Paste. Yeah. Okay. So now that I've worked out DC, I need the area of the roof. So in order to do that, I need to do DC times CG. So that means I need to do 1.6 times 2.10. So 1.60 times 2.10. So this way I will get the area that I need to paint, which is equal to, let's see, 2.10. So you get 3.36, 3.36. Now, since this is not the final answer, so let's just write it as, uh, let's just take it as 3.36. Since it's 3.3616, so I'll take it as 3.362. Now, the question has given us how the paint works, how much area it covers, how much area uh, one liter of paint covers. So I'm gonna set up a nice proportion. Liter is to area. Now this remember is meter square, okay? This is the area that needs to be painted. So one liter of paint, covers two square meters. The amount that I'm painting, that we need to paint in fact, is 3.362. How many liters of paint will we need? X, so let's cross multiply. So X is equals to 3.362 divided by two. So let's, oops, sorry, let's divide the answer by two, 3.362 divided by two. So I get 1.681, which when rounded off correct to three significant figures, turns out to be 1.68. So, so far so good. Again, this was a tricky part. And I'll tell you the common error that I think that students will make in this, in a question like this, is that they will take DC to be 1.55 without taking into regard that this ABCD is not a rectangle. Had it been a rectangle, it would have been correct, but it's a trapezium. So that means this length is slightly slant. It's not the same as AB because this angle right here, XDC is not exactly 90 degrees. So just a couple of things that you need guys need to watch out for. So yeah, that's that was part B. And here comes uh, the angle of elevation of D from F, which is again four marks. So that means it does require a decent amount of working. So let's read it again. I forgot what it said. The angle of elevation of D from F. Okay, so angle of elevation of D from F. Okay, so I'm gonna clear this mess that I've made and hopefully that won't be that big of a problem. So remember whenever you're working out the angle of elevation or the angle of depression, so it's best to make a 90 degree triangle. So angle of elevation of D from F means that this is the 90 degree triangle that I'm going to make, okay? Now, since the base is horizontal, that means any line, any vertical line, which is then connect, which is when it is connected from the base is gonna be perpendicular to it. So what I mean to say is that this angle right here, DAF is gonna be a 90 degree angle. And the angle that you and I need to work out is basically this angle. And what are the lengths that we have? We have 2.25 and we need to work out F, AF, okay. So let's let's do just that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this. In fact, let me just take a screenshot of it. I'll edit this part in the video, hopefully. Yeah, so now that we have the question in front of us, it'll be a lot easier. So this is the angle that we need to work out and we need to work out, in fact, we have the opposite length. We need to work out the adjacent length. Do not think 1.85 is the adjacent, adjacent length. So the adjacent length will be worked out by using Pythagoras theorem. So this angle isn't going to be a 90 degree angle because again the base is rectangle so AF is going to be equal to square root of 1.55 squared plus 2.10 squared so AF is equals to 
actually I can just write the final answer now square root of 1.55 squared plus 2.10 squared so AF turns out to be 2.6100 so 2.61 will do and so I have I now have the adjacent length this right here is the adjacent length I have the opposite length so that means I'm going to use tan so tan of AFD is equals to opposite which is 2.25 upon the adjacent which is 2.61 sorry 2.61 yeah my bad so 2.25 divided by the last answer and tan inverse of the answer so AFD is equal to 40.76 okay 40.76 but remember angles are supposed to be given correct to one decimal place so in that case it turns out to be 40.8 degrees so yeah that's that's all for this video i hope you guys understood this question and uh, that's that's all see you guys in the next one until then take care bye, -bye.